Okay guys, we're going to be uh, doing our second cut on our bad port. Now, what changes have been made? Well, I actually did touch up the valve job a bit. Uh, if you notice, the bottom cut is not even close to being a 60. It's a very deep angle. So I'm not sure what angles they're using on the original L29, but they're not standard angles by any means. Uh, the angles that are on here aren't completely standard either, but that's okay. We're not really going to discuss that. What we are going to discuss is our straight port versus our short port. And the difference we get in the Dykem, which we've seen before, it actually looks quite similar. I should mention that I did lay that fin back a little bit more. Remember last time we had a huge amount of uh, dykem coming off of that. It's a little bit less now. It looks really good on the chamber. It's got some on the cylinder wall side and it goes across the chamber with very light speckles. Let's check the bore before I forget. It amazes me how close they look on the bore. The valve looks very similar to the way it looked last time. Now what had been changed is I put a different texture on the bowl. I put a slightly different valve job on it. I cartridge rolled the chamber and the rest of the port got a very heavy rough texture. Okay, let's see if we can get in there so you can ask it. You can see where the liquid is hitting that ramp, but it's not the same as it was. I personally like this better. One thing we, we haven't talked about was the size of these original ports. And I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but I think they're quite small, like 240 cc's. Correct me and put that in the comments, guys. A couple things I have been straightened up on is this L29 originally came with 9.4 compression, which is a decent amount of compression. Most big blocks didn't have that, unless they were high performance, didn't have that much compression. Oh, I was sent a few other specs, but I'm down a few watts. Sorry, guys. I'll see if I can remember before the end of this video. And part of my point was, even though they've had a lot of iron taken out of them, it's not a huge port, which is going to be advantageous for a street ride. Will it limit our top end? Yeah, our, our flow is going to top out about where it has been topping out, because what I believe the port just gets saturated. Can't get any more around the periphery of the valve, and we don't have enough volume, but that's okay. For where we're going to be running, it should be just fine. I want to see if I can get this all in one shot. You can see the different angles they're coming into, and where the, the fins are lined up. As far as I'm concerned, it's a very interesting design. It definitely boosts up the efficiency of a big block. Okay, what are some of the problems with the big block? The, the chamber is ridiculously huge, like 119 cc's. Okay, it's a 24 degree valve angle, not great. Yeah, they're canted, but they're not really canted that much. So I don't think it's that big a difference. That's my opinion, which means nothing. What will be surprising is when we go through the comparisons of our second cut on both of these, what the swirls do and swirl reversals, okay? We should explain that so everyone understands. We'll do it on our good port first, right? Our good port is exiting this way and we get our swirl this way. That's the, the direction we want it to go into, okay? Now this one, is aimed more like small block forward, right? It's that way, but when the air comes out, it goes towards the center anyway, and it still swirls in this direction. But it, it does it at a different velocity, okay? Now, what happens if you get the short side working really well and a lot of air is coming out across the short side? Well, then we get a swirl in the opposite direction. And as of right now, the way both of these are set up on the bench, they both get a flow reversal. 
uh, a swirl reversal somewhere in that curve, which I find is very interesting. Okay, this was our good port with the super rough texture. We removed the boss in there in the port, and it's got a close gasket match. Well, this is the bad port. We didn't have a boss to remove, but it also got the real rough texture. It got, I didn't mention it here, but it, it got uh, touched on that valve job. And it got that gasket match. So we're comparing apples to apples at this point. Let's do some pluses and minuses and see. Uh, as a rule, our bed port flows less. Okay, so I did do some work to even them up because you know me. I need, I need them as close as I can get them. Okay, it doesn't look good as far as our pluses and minuses, but take how close we are. Take a look. Not bad. We are down 10 at 300. Not, I would have liked to have done better on that. And at 500, we're down quite a bit. We're 275.5 here. We're 263.2. And after 600, it actually works better. We've got two pluses. And it, they top out almost identical. Okay, well, that is important. Because remember... The two that we floated through on the intake manifold, which I didn't, I didn't really explain, was our straight port goes through intake port number eight, and our bad port goes through intake port number six. Number eight is an upper H, six is a lower H. Okay, it has the advantage of the big plenum, so it's gonna be flowing better. It also has a better shape. So, it'll be interesting to see how close they come once you put them on the manifold. Okay, as far as, here, yeah, this is our good port. Air speeds, this was our, you know, second cut. This is our bad port, second cut. As far as our pinch, we're down a little bit, but we're still relatively close from port to port. Now here, I obviously goofed something up. I only took one reading. It should have been at the very top of the uh, the ramp but I don't know if I did that so I took two measurements on this one 256 which is the top of the ramp the air is screaming across that and 116 the good thing about having air scream across that ramp is if fuel hits it it's shearing right so that's a good thing for our, our mileage and performance as far as the other side right this got a big boost when we did some work on this after we removed that boss we don't have a boss on this side to remove, so it's going to be less than. This is what's interesting. Because of the shape of the port, this one dumps into the center of the cylinder. This is aimed more at the wall, so it's more restricted coming out of the periphery of the valve towards the chamber. So it makes the short side air speeds higher, plus, plus, plus. Okay? Both of those were taken at 550 lift, which is deep in the range of where this is going to be operating. Okay. Uh, the swirl curves are really start to get confusing. Okay, this is our, our good port. We had a reversal right in the mid-range, which I wasn't thrilled about. But after we put the intake manifold on, right, these are our swirls with the intake manifold. They're all positive except for the last one. So it gives you an idea of how much of an influence the intake manifold has as far as your swirl curve. That's why I like to test it both ways. And these pluses and minuses are in reference to this. Now this port is aimed in a, di you know, in a different way. So it should have a different swirl curve. We got plus up a little bit, minus down a touch, minus down a touch, minus down a touch. Now here we've got reversal. Okay, and we're still going in the positive direction here, so this is way ahead, way ahead. This one I made a mistake here, it was 619, not 916. My superintendent made fun of my dyslexia the other day. I don't know if I'm happy about that. Funny though. Okay, so we're still positive here, so this is a plus, and then when they're just about done going to reversal here, 1509, we got minus 1581. That's our only minus on this curve, which I would think is better than four minuses. 
and then we go back positive. So we're down a touch, down a touch, up a touch. Is it a usable curve? Yeah, between 500 and 600, we got a good amount of swirl, not really a problem. Is it a problem that it changes direction mid, midway? It's a good question. Okay, guys, this is our good port. So we're comparing second cut through the giant Q-Jet that had more work done to it. This is what you guys have seen before. We topped out right around 240 going through the manifold through the head. Okay, here is our bad port going through the Q-Jet that had more work. And as far as comparing side to side, these pluses and minuses are reference to this. Minus, minus, plus, minus, 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 plus, equals, plus, plus, plus. We actually top out at 260 versus 240. That's a big difference right there. Okay. And it lifts where we're going to be operating. 240, 250, that little bit I'm not going to worry about. But it's the bad port. It should flow less, right? Well, guess what? That extra flow isn't coming from the head. It's coming from the manifold. I'm 99% sure of that. If you'd like to argue with that, that point with me, do it in the comments. Now, the swirl curve is really interesting. Here, we were all positive except for the very last one. Here, we're positive, positive, positive. We go up to 3,000 and change. We have a reversal between... 400 and 600 and then we go in the positive direction again so our swirls look like minus uh, plus minus 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 plus it's a cer certainly is an interesting curve and we didn't have that curve on the first cut let me grab that page and see what it looked like Okay, so just to make things more confusing. I didn't realize it went up to 258 last time I did that. But that's interesting. Okay. In fact, if you compare them side to side, the first cut actually looks a little better than the second cut. And we'll take a good look at our swirl curve, right? The positive, positive, positive. It goes up higher on this one, right? and only has one reversal. We have three reversals down here. If you think you know what's going on with that, let me know, guys. It's certainly going to be interesting. Does it make me worry at all? No. It's going to be, it's a turbulent charge head to begin with. And even though it's had a lot of work done to it, it's still a turbulent charge head. What does turbulent charge do? Actually, it's an important point we haven't talked about with these heads. These heads will require, just like on the small block uh, vortex screw port, swirl ports, they require very little timing advance. Somewhere between 28 and 32 is usually all they'll, they'll deal with. I would think these are going to be right in that area. They're going to require a different timing curve not so much advanced because of the mixture homogenization makes it burn faster which is more efficient and you can get more energy out of it earlier in in the stroke which is all important things right it's going to be a high efficiency head i mean it's not really a mileage head because anytime you're talking 468 cubes mileage is I'm sure guys have broken 10 miles to the gallon out of it, but heck, the old work truck I think used to get about six with a 355. It's also pushing around 5,800 pounds, and someone kept stepping on the pedal. These are problems you have, okay, guys? So, as an overall package, you guys give me your uh, your input. I think we're going to be done with these. I don't know if we're going to do anything else. The owner will uh, watch these videos and let me know. And uh, I do have a good project come in. Of course, I screwed up. I screwed up my uh, estimate a little bit, but uh, hopefully, I can make it up somehow. Uh, 
it's a 289 for antique racing it will be a solid flat tappet it has to use stock rocker arms ick so that right there is going to limit our RPMs to about 7500 I think if you guys know how much how many RPMs you can pull out of those cast rocker arms I mean something like cryo treating them is probably a good idea I, I need to talk to you guys about some of that and uh, the heads are the same C6 FE's we did last time but I'm getting them through my buddy who is gonna do a bunch of work to them and a lot of work I'm not going to be speaking about i.e. there strict set of rules need to be complied with and we need to comply with them so we're not going to talk about them in any case we do get to use a performer RPM not an air gap but a performer RPM and I do have some experience with that manifold uh, from like the 90s it hasn't changed it looks like it's the same manifold but it'll be interesting to see what I can get out of that manifold versus what we got out of that big Cobra. That Cobra took a stupid amount of work, but we were getting over 300 CFM out of certain runners. Do I think I can do that with a Performer RPM? Well, the last 289 we did with those was an 8500 RPM engine, so we're going to lose 1000 RPM, so I don't need the ports as big. But it'll be an interesting project if it actually happens. i got to uh, order the heads this week. All right, guys. Uh, what I probably should be doing is CCing all this stuff and doing some IOP programs, but I really just want to grind something. In any case, thanks for hanging out, guys. Have a good night.